Hey Kim, so today we are going to move on and talk about gas stoichiometry. All right, so all the laws you've learned so far, including gases, can be applied to calculate the stoichiometry of reactions in which gases are reactants or products. So remember, what is stoichiometry? Stoichiometry is knowing how much of something is going to be used in a reaction, or how much you're gonna get out of a reaction, okay? Recall the coefficients, don't mind my housemates, they're watching YouTube videos? Sorry. Um, recall that coefficients in chemical equations represent molar amounts of substances taking part in the reaction. Okay? For example, when butane gas burns, the reaction is represented by the following chemical equation in your book. 2C4H10 plus 13O2 is 8CO2 plus 10H2. From the balanced chemical equation, you know that 2 moles of butane, rea butane reacts with 13 moles of oxygen because those are your coefficients. Um, and that produces 8 moles of carbon dioxide and 10 moles of water vapor. By examining that balanced equation, you're able to find mole ratios, right, um, of the coefficients. We use the coefficients to find the ratios. Avogadro's principle states that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain an equal number of particles. Um, thus, when gases are involved, the coefficients um, in a balanced chemical equation represent not only molar amounts, but also relative volumes. So you can now apply the coefficients not just to molar amounts, but also to volumes. So if your coefficient is 2, you can say 2 liters, okay? So calculations involving only volume. To find the volume of a gaseous reactant or product in a reaction, you must know the balanced chemical equation for the reaction and the volume of at least one other gas. So examine the reaction showing the combustion of methane. So let's write that down, okay? So the combustion of methane... Methane is CH4. I hope you can hear me. I'm sorry they're so loud. Um, methane is CH4, and that's a gas. And then we add oxygen, because whenever things are combusting, we need oxygen. Um, and that gives us carbon dioxide, because that's always a byproduct of a combustion, and 2H2O. Sorry, that's a plus. Um, and there needed to be two oxygen. Okay, so your coefficients are two and two. So for every one mole of uh, methane, we need two moles of oxygen. But now we can also apply this to liters. For every one liter of methane, we need two liters of oxygen, okay? So um, the complete combustion of one liter of methane will produce one liter of carbon dioxide and two liters of water vapor, okay? So let's say, one liter of CH4 requires two liters of oxygen to combust. And that's going to give us one liter of CO2 plus two liters of water vapor, okay? It's those same coefficients. If there's no coefficient, remember that means one. Uh, the same coefficients are going to apply to volume, okay? Um, so, what volume of methane is needed to produce 26? liters of water vapor. Well, our ratio of methane to water vapor is one to two. Two liters of water for every one liter of methane, right? So that's going to be a conversion factor now. At this point, um, we can figure out if we want 26 liters of water vapor, how do we figure out that, okay? So in this point, I actually wrote that upside down, we know we have 26 liters of water, um, and for every, it's one liter of methane produces two of water. Remember, I put what we want on top. So 26 times one half, essentially, one divided by two is one half, equals 13 liters. So we're going to need 13 liters of methane in order to get 26 liters of water. It's just ratios, okay? The temperature and pressure affect all gases in the same way, so the conditions don't need to be considered, right? So let's talk about some volume-volume problems. Let's go through an example. What volume of oxygen gas is needed for the complete combustion of four liters of propane gas? Um, assume constant pressure and temperature. So first of all, we need an equation, all right? So I'm going to get rid of this one. Now, in uh, the problem, we are asked for combustion of propane, which is C3H8. Okay, so whenever anything is combusted, C3H8, we need oxygen, and we end up with carbon dioxide and water vapor every time. But now let's balance it, right? Okay, so we have three Cs on this side, so we have to have three carbons on that side. Um, and uh, if we have eight Hs, eight hydrogens over here, then that means we need four of these. 
Um, and that means we're going to have six plus four, 10 oxygen. So we put a five there and then it's balanced, all right? So the problem asked what volume of oxygen gas is needed for the complete combustion of four liters of propane. So we're now looking for oxygen when we have propane. So what's that ratio? Well, it's going to be five to one. Five of oxygen for every one of propane. Okay, so we asked for the complete combustion of four liters of propane gas. So we have four liters of propane. We multiply that by our conversion factor, which is five over one, so five. Four times five, 20 liters O2. So we know now that we are gonna need 20 liters of oxygen in order for that to happen. Whenever you're asking for volume to volume, step one, you need to write a balanced equation. Quite frankly, guys, if you can't write a balanced equation, you need to email me and ask for practice because you need to be able to write a balanced equation at this point, okay? Um, you've just got to. You have to. It's not negotiable. You can't skim through it. You've got to understand how to do that. So if you can't do that, talk to me. We'll set up a time to meet, and I'll give you extra practice. I know you don't want extra practice, but you will not pass unless you can write a balanced equation, okay? So know that. So step one, write a balanced equation. Step two, figure out the ratio of what you want, what the problem's asking for, to what you're given. So in this case, we wanted oxygen and we were given um, whatever that was, propane. Okay, um, and then step three, use your ratio as a conversion factor. So multiply. Four times five, that's all it is, okay? So for those first, I think, three on your Junopod, all it is, good grief, that flare is terrible. That's bad. All it is is just these conversions. So you just write the balance equation, figure out your conversion, okay? Now what do we do if the calculations involve volume and mass? Okay, so... Keeps moving. All right, so now we're talking about volume and mass. To do stoichiometric calculations that involve both gas or both gas volumes and masses, you must know the balanced equation and at least one mass or volume for a reactant or a product um, and the conditions under which the gas volumes have been measured. So this is where we're going to use the ideal gas law, okay? In doing this type of problem, remember that the balanced chemical equation allows you to find the ratio for moles and gas, gas volume only. It doesn't allow you to find ratios for masses, right? The coefficients never meant mass. You can't use it for mass. Um, all masses must be given must be converted to moles or volumes before being used as part of a ratio. Also remember all temperature units have to be Kelvin. Okay? So let's say we're let's go through an example problem and then you should be able to use the blueprint of the example problem to do the rest of your Junopod problems. Okay? So ammonia is synthesized from hydrogen and nitrogen gases. And this one gives you the chemical equation. So we have N2 plus hydrogen, which appears with H2, uh, gives us ammonia, 2NH3. All right, if five liters of nitrogen reacts completely by this reaction at constant pressure and temperature of three atmospheres and 298 Kelvin, how many grams of ammonia are produced? So we are given volume of N2 is gonna be five liters. What else are we given in the problem? We're given that the pressure is three atmospheres. We're given the temperature is 298 Kelvin. Remember, if they gave it to you in Celsius, you'd have to convert, okay? Then we're asked for the mass of ammonia. So um, let's figure out some volume ratios, okay? Because if we know how much if we know the volume of our gas that we want, then we can figure out the mass from knowing the volume. So we start off with just a volume to volume ratio, okay? So we know that every one volume, we're given the volume of nitrogen, we want the volume of ammonia because we want the mass of ammonia, but we can't find the mass of ammonia yet. We can find the volume because we can do volume to volume, okay? So start with the volume. 
We're given the, the volume of nitrogen. We want the volume of ammonia. So that's going to be 2 ammonia for every 1 nitrogen. We were given 5 of it. So 5 liters of nitrogen times 2 nitrogen, 2 over 1. That gives us 10 liters of ammonia. So now we know that there's 10 liters of ammonia. So now we need to find the number of moles of ammonia because we can't jump right to mass yet because our ideal gas law is PV equals nRT. So knowing the pressure, which we do, knowing the volume, which we just calculated for, knowing the number of moles, which we don't know, but R is our constant, so we know that, and temperature we have. So now we can solve for the number of moles. You can't jump right to mass, okay? You've got to take this in steps. This is where most of you get stuck. You want to find one magical equation that will solve the whole thing for you, and sometimes it doesn't work like that. Most of the time it doesn't work like that. You've got to be able to go through those steps to take it stepwise, one at a time. So when given volume, you can volume of one, you can find volume of the other. When you have volume of that, then you can use this to find number of moles, and when you know the number of moles, you can use that to find the mass, okay? So let's go through that. Um, our pressure is 3, our volume is 10, we don't know N, because it's in atmospheres, our R is going to be 0 0.0821, and our temperature is 298. Okay, so this is 30. Where's my calculator? 0 0.0821 times 298, that gives us 24.46 N divided by 24.46. We end up with 1.23 moles equals N. So now we know that there were 10 liters of ammonia. There's 1.23 moles of ammonia. But the problem asked for mass, all right? So now let's calculate the atomic mass of ammonia. Um, so let's see our mass of, N, of nitrogen. 14.007 hydrogen equals 1.001 so then our atomic mass because there's three hydrogens is going to be so mass of NH3 is going to be 17.04 grams per mole we don't have one mole we have 1.23 so we do 1.23 moles times 17.04 grams over sorry, over 1 mole. 1 1.23 times 17 gives us 21 grams of NH3. That glare, man. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so ultimately volume to volume is easy when you have the balanced equation start there once you know your volume you can figure out your number of moles by using the ideal gas law and once you know your number of moles you can convert moles to mass with that okay so it's all stuff that we've done before. It's just now, well, it's all equations that we've used before. It's now just combining them kind of all together. I will take a picture of this somehow and make it accessible to you in case it's hard to see. But ultimately, okay, I know it's a lot of math, okay? But again, you have to think of it as steps. You have to think of it step by step by step. There's not one magical equation that's going to give you what you need for these problems. You have to go through it, okay? It's not easy but go through it. Write down your work. Show your work. If you try and do it all in your head, you will get it wrong, okay? Write down your work, send me a picture, and then if you get, if you want, you know, extra credit. If you show your work and you send me a picture of your work, then I can help you fix it and I will give you a little bit of extra credit, okay? So, there's that. Um, your Junopod's open. It's called gas stoichiometry. This is the last lesson of the chapter. All right, so then later you'll get your VA for this chapter. Um, but good luck. 
Okay. Um, we do have a help session at 10 a.m. Um, Wednesday, April 29th. I recommend you come so that I can help you out with this. Um, but you guys can do this. Okay. You absolutely can do this. So with that being said, have an awesome day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.